Hi there. Coming at you from a county park in California. This river behind me, I've been told by the locals that it usually is dry, that it doesn't even flow. And it's flowing. You can see and hear the current. It's flowing intensely. It's beautiful. This video is for you. If you're looking to do this lifestyle, however you hear concern, maybe even discouragement or pressure from loved ones, family, friends, even colleagues or community about not embarking on this path. If you're new to the channel, welcome. In the spring of 2022, I got rid of 98% of what I owned, converted my Nissan Sentra into a super tiny mini micro home on wheels, took my work on the road with me, and I travel the West while living in my car. In some videos, I take you along with me as I adventure in these incredible lands. In other videos, I share all about living in a car, how-tos, nomadic tips, and the philosophy of this wonderful and simple life. If you enjoy these videos, hit that subscribe button below. I would say one of my top 10 most frequently asked questions is how did I get the bravery to do this and how did I deal with family members who didn't want me to do this? If you're a young adult and looking to do this, it's often a parent or a primary caregiver who has concerns about you embarking on this life, but also I've talked with quite a number of women who are in their 50s and 60s and even 70s and their children really are worried about them living this lifestyle. Their children really don't want them to do this because they're concerned. A couple important things to note right at the start. No matter what choices and decisions you make for your life, you are going to have people who disagree with your choices. Decisions are a big deal. I think they're kind of what this whole entire life is about, learning how to properly choose. I believe the best way to make decisions is to be divinely connected to a source far greater than you. And when you have that call, I believe it's your duty and obligation to fulfill it. And I believe you will absolutely be met with resistance. In fact, the more that you are following and pursuing your soul's calling, the more resistance you are gonna get. That just seems to be sort of the name of the game here with free will and decisions on earth. Why might your loved ones be uncomfortable with you saying, hey, guess what I'm doing? I'm gonna go live alone out in the woods. I'm gonna be living in my car, in my van, in my RV, my truck. I'm gonna be staying the night at truck stops and way the heck out in the middle of nowhere, sleeping on city streets. I mean, really, if we think about it, especially from the standpoint of our parents, and especially if we come from traditional places that does sound like uh oh is, is my loved one is she doing all right <laughs> you know unfortunately in my circumstance i've been wanting to do this ever since i was 17 years old and as a result of that people weren't surprised sometimes i say if i do have a regret i would have done this far sooner it really came down to not trusting myself it came down to basically allowing myself to let fear be greater than my bravery. I mean, frankly, it was that. I think it's so important that whenever we make a big life decision, no matter what it is, I think it's really helpful to understand our own motivations and reasons for pursuing a particular lifestyle. Because when we really understand why we are doing something, then for those that we do want to share our reasons with, even if they disagree with us, we're coming from a solid place connected to spirit, connected to divinity. And if we love somebody who's really concerned, then we want to help them. It's not that we don't want to rebel from them. We don't want to be cruel to them. We don't want to vilify them. We just need to do what we're called to do and also serve our loved ones as best as we absolutely can. Usually, when it's a parent or a child or a sibling or a family member who are discouraging us from this life, they are afraid for our safety. When I told my parents that I was actually gonna do this, because they've heard me talking about this since I was 17 years old and I almost did it a few times. When I told them, okay, I'm actually gonna do this now and I'm gonna do this in my car. <laughs> I was nervous to tell them because I didn't want them to worry so much about me. I love my parents and I understand. I understand where they're coming from in terms of their concern. 
because this has been something I've been wanting to do forever, it didn't surprise them that I finally took this path. In fact, I'm extraordinarily blessed that as I was telling my mom, okay, mom, I'm gonna do this. And I was like, mom, you, you know me, you know how long I've ached to do this. And if I don't do this, I will regret it. I will be on my deathbed and I will regret that I didn't do this. And her response was, yep, you're right. If you don't do this, you will regret it. And I'm blessed as can be with my mom who then responded and she said, you know what? You'll at least have had the experience. You'll have known the experience and you'll move on to the next thing after this. Or you will learn and discover that this is a lifestyle you want to experience for the rest of your life. But you have to do it. It's a soul thing. <laughs> Thank you, mom. Thank you. That made my life a lot easier. It did because I love my parents. I don't want them suffering in fear. Their opinion matters to me. Like, so if they were discouraging me, it would affect me because their opinion matters to me. And I think that's the gift about love. I think that's the gift and beautiful thing about really having people in your life who want you to be well is, yes, we need to find a balance to still pursue our path. But when we really love somebody, their opinion does matter. We don't want to be all sociopathic. There's a lot of that out there in the world. It's like, do your thing no matter what. You still got to do your thing. And I'd advise you to do your thing connected to a higher calling. Don't do fleeting, pleasure-based, high-risk things for, you know, human-based, worldly attention. Just don't connect to spirit. Do that thing. And then, as best as you can, lovingly, <laughs> explore, communicate, the dynamic with family and friends. And then there was telling my dad. My dad's more traditional. He's a boomer from the 50s. I mean, it's like what this lifestyle meant in his generation is so radically different than what this lifestyle means for my generation. So I do think it's possible that my dad still thinks I'm crazy, but he loves me and I love him and he helped me build my car. He gives me fantastic build ideas. He taught me how to use all his equipment and saws and is constantly helping me make sure to stay vigilant over things that I might not have known to be vigilant about. And I'm extraordinarily grateful about it because there are safety risks in this lifestyle. There just are. So to have somebody who loves you and wants you safe, willing to basically share with you things that you might miss or might not see is such a huge gift. Thank you, Dad. I want to share the reasons that I choose this lifestyle. Now, I can do an entire lengthy video series on this topic. This is going to be a nutshell version. Quick editing side note. The reason I'm sharing motivations in this video is because it's really important to know what your motivations are for yourself so that you can clearly share them with your loved ones. Now your loved ones may or may not understand after you share them, but at the very least, when you know your motivations and you're grounded in your motivations, that's the best place you can be. I live this lifestyle because I've always been called to it. I love the nomad thing. I don't know why, it's a soul thing. I can't describe it, but I like to be on the move. And every single time I've tried to stay in one place, it simply does not work because my soul is a soul in motion. My car is my 36th home. I lived in 35 homes. The majority of those were apartments. I got to live all across the country in a lot of beautiful places. And I got tired of moving. It's very expensive to move that much. It's very exhausting to move that much. And my soul still needed to be in motion. When I am in one place, I get so restless and so stressed to the point that I become depressed. I don't belong in one location. I don't like to move fast. I'm a slow traveler. I move at like the pace of a month here, a month there, a few weeks here, a few weeks there. But even if I stay in the same general region, I get a different view from my house often and regularly. It's wonderful. It feels right. So nomadism and freedom are a huge reason as to why I live this life. I also wanted to live simply. When you live in a vehicle, you must live simply. And there's something to be aware of. It might not feel simple at first because it's such an adjustment. That's what happened for me. I was confused as to why it felt so gosh darn hard to live in my car. Well, it's because you're used to living in a house. You're used to all of the conveniences and 
suddenly you are living so unbelievably simply. It took me about four or five months to really get used to that kind of change. So glad I gave it the time because now simple living has radically, unbelievably, and totally altered the entire course of my life. And my life is fantastically simple and fantastically free. I do have the ability to travel with this lifestyle. Not only do I save more money because I don't pay rent or a mortgage, my home is on wheels so I get to go where I want. And as long as I'm not, you know, stopped by the weather or stopped by lack of having internet access since I do need that for work, I get to explore and travel and see new places. And <laughs> not having rent or a mortgage are absolutely part of why I want this. If I had a mortgage, that would have meant I was stuck in one place. That would have meant I couldn't just up and leave on a whim, which my soul needs to do. And instead, I would have to wait till I get renters or until somebody purchases my house. It's just, I lose freedom in that scenario. I like not paying rent. Rent affords lots of freedom, but you're still confined. You're confined to the time of your lease. I always preferred month to month options so that I could leave when I needed to go. But month to month options are more expensive and they're harder to come by and they have a higher deposit. So all in all, that's more expensive. Living in a car makes a lot of sense. So with rent, you are working so much and you do not get to keep your money because you're giving your money to your shelter. And that's like the bulk of most people's income. And even though it's suggested to keep your rent like 25% or less of your total income, <laughs> ha, that's all I can say. In this economy, ha, not possible. Maybe it's possible. I don't wanna be inaccurate. It's possible, but then it also comes with other sacrifices that I'm not willing to do. I don't mind living small. I love living alone. I love my autonomy that occurs when I am in my own space. So I don't wanna share space. I don't wanna be stuck in a space. I don't wanna be committed to a space. It's absolutely perfect. Okay, so let's talk about some of the reasons that our loved ones might think we're crazy. When they might think we're irresponsible. Even these things that I value and the choices that I make, some people would say, well, that's irresponsible. You should commit, you should do X, Y, or Z. And you know what? That's perfectly legit for them to do for their lives. If you want to do that, more power to you. So maybe you've explained these reasons to your loved ones and maybe they even understand them, but they still have concerns because of this. Now, some people who do live this way really struggle with severe mental illness. They struggle with mental illness to the point that they're not able to provide for themselves. It could be something like schizophrenia. It could be addiction to the point that seeking that addiction has consumed their life and they're homeless as a result. A lot of homelessness is rife with mental illness. And our loved ones, they might worry if we are suffering in a way they might not be aware of. They might wonder, oh my gosh, does she or he have an addiction that I didn't know about? Does he or she struggle with a certain mental illness that I didn't know about? Like, oh my gosh, why would somebody choose this? They might not know and they might genuinely be concerned about that. And they also might be concerned about our safety because they're like, okay, I, I might understand the reason, but does my loved one understand the danger that's out there from those who might have an addiction and are willing to hurt you if you're a means to get their needs, sat their addicted needs satisfied? It could also be that people who have chosen this life in the past, they might be running for something from the law. <laughs> they, they, it could be that they couldn't fit into society in an anti-social way. And as a result, stay on the outskirts of society, not because it's this calling and dream and freedom, but because potentially they're hiding. That's also important to know. So your loved ones might hear that you're gonna go live out in your vehicle in the same places as the people who are addicted, mentally ill, and have criminal history. So that is why loved ones are concerned. And then if you are in the city and you're sleeping on a city street, even if you choose a safe neighborhood, there's legitimate risks. I mean, the one time I was ever followed, I was in a city, in a safe city, in a safe neighborhood, but on a city street, mm -hmm. your loved ones might just worry that you're not looking out for all of the potential risks because you might be whimsical. A lot of people who, like myself, I'm very whimsical. Long history of idealism, 
didn't necessarily want to see the darkness in the world. How we can really assure our loved ones is by letting them know we're as prepared as we can possibly be. And that means becoming prepared as we can possibly be. Part of becoming super prepared was sitting down with my loved ones and saying, let's troubleshoot, let's brainstorm every single safety scenario, concern scenario you've got. Let's write it down and let's brainstorm solutions together. In fact, my safety video, which I will link in the description below, came about as a result of that conversation that I had with my parents. And then I would also recommend reading the comments of that safety video. There are some folks who put some beneficial safety tips in the comments. Thank you for that. And thank you to my parents and to my friends and my loved ones for helping me think of all of these scenarios that I can prepare for. It's so important to do that when you go on the road. And the more that you sit down and take the time to brainstorm and prepare for these things with your loved ones, the more confident they're going to be. They still might not agree with your decision, you guys, but they're at least gonna feel more confident in your safety. And I can't recommend enough, especially for all my ladies out there, take an extremely thorough self-defense course. If you need to, get psychologically prepared to self-defend. You want to be absolutely 100% extraordinarily capable to take care of yourself. And I mean that whether you're on the road or whether you live in a house, go do it, go do it. It's a life changer. It is a life changer to be able to self-defend. On the note of responsibility, it could be that your loved ones are concerned you're gonna become a mooch, that you're going to be crashing in their house, in their driveway, that you aren't going to be responsible for your own life and you're going to expect them to pay your bills or your way. Let me tell you, don't do that. That is completely reasonable of them not to want to support an adult. Now, if you're pursuing this lifestyle for freedom, that means that you are economically free. It means you're supporting your way. It means you are self-reliant. The very best thing we can do for our loved ones is be responsible and capable. We have to pursue our dreams because if in an effort to make our loved ones feel secure, we don't pursue our dreams, we're gonna resent them and it's gonna come out sideways. So we have to pursue our dreams, but we want to do so with strong capability and strong confidence. And it's important to note, for some, despite your best efforts at communication, despite your authenticity and your genuine desire to have connection to your loved ones as you embark on this path, you may have loved ones who simply will not understand, who simply give a firm disapproval. If that's the case, I am sorry. That's painful. It's hard because you want your loved ones to join you on something that is so excited and soul driven for you. But never give your power away. And don't let that stop you. Do your best, then let it go. Hey, I got a poem that uh, talks about that coming out on Monday. A final comment before I wrap up this video. This video was not a boundary video. This video was not a video about how to set boundaries or limits with people. It's more about how to have open dialogue and how to have a good perspective and communication flow with people who are concerned about you embarking on this lifestyle while you want to maintain a good relationship with them. Now, for some folks, you might just need a solid boundary. And if that is hard to do, check out my assertiveness training at sweetestfreedom.com. That's a large part of the work that I take on the road with me. If there are people who you do not even desire to have the conversation with about why you make this lifestyle choice, don't have the conversation. It's none of their business unless you choose to make it their business. For me, I have loved ones who matter, so I'm willing to share my reasons with them because they matter to me. However, if people question my decision and they're not like much a part of my life, I don't share my reasons. I share my reasons out here on YouTube because it's fun, because I love this life, because this is awesome, because I got so much joy and inspiration for people who shared their motivations and their philosophy and their perspective. Like this YouTube nomad community literally gave me courage to go do this. So I like sharing all of my reasons here on YouTube. There are hundreds of thousands of us out there 
all over, all over the world. I have connected to nomads on nearly every single continent since I've embarked on this lifestyle. So connect to community, find those who cheer you on. As Rumi says, set your life on fire and seek those who fan your flame. Thanks for watching. To follow my adventures, as well as to get more car life tips, tricks, and nomadic philosophy, like, comment, turn on that notification bell, and subscribe.